Hey guys, Saga here, and today I'm going to show you how to play Widowmaker on Temple of Anubis. Now, Temple of Anubis is a map that was actually made for Widowmaker. Like, if there was any map that you should probably learn how to play Widow on, Temple of Anubis is it. And I would say if there's a second map, it, it's definitely Hollywood Objective A. But today, we're just going to cover Temple of Anubis, Objective A, and Objective B. How to position your Widow, how to position your Venom Mine, where to look, and why, to, and why you're looking there. Alright, so let's get into it. The first spot is up here. I'm sure everybody knows that a Widow likes to be positioned here. Uh, while you're positioned here, you want to control this aerial space. Look out for Pharahs, for Genjis, for Divas, anything that might fly over this area. And you want to control this room area. So most of the time they're going to run into the right side room. Uh, they may run into the left side room. You're basically just controlling the, the two doorways looking for shots. The important thing here is notice Widow Mine positioning. This is only good at the very beginning of the match because they're going to try to run into that room and maybe you'll get some additional damage. Maybe you'll kill somebody who would have normally ran through the room and gotten a health pack. Uh, immediately after they break this room, you need to switch your Venom Mine position from here to one of two locations. And this depends on how good of a team you're up against. If you were at a very low rank, you probably don't have to worry about this too much. But here is your vulnerable point. Somebody may come up behind you, a Reaper might sneak all the way around and get here. Um, you don't see this much on the lower ranks, but it's still a good idea to play well from the very beginning. So what you can do is either position a Widow Mine here, or up there. Now the reason for that is that Genji can jump in through this window, uh, a Reaper can teleport up here, a Junkrat can even double bomb up here, and a Winston can also make the jump. Although I don't, I don't think I've ever tried it, so don't quote me on that. Um, but they can come out the back here, flank you from behind. You want warning of that. If that bomb goes off, you can immediately position yourself, or you can retreat to this side. And that's the next part of controlling this area. So say the entire enemy team pushes this area and goes all the way up to here, and you can't see them. You have no vantages, you're not getting any shots off, you're not doing any work. You need to change your position to this side. Once you're on this side, you've got a clear vantage of, of this room that they're probably all exiting from. Uh, you even have an advantage of up here if somebody tries to do a, a, a complicated flank maneuver. When you're over here, what you immediately need to do is reposition your Venom Mine. So if you're standing here, you don't want your Venom Mine here because it's not enough forewarning. You want your Venom Mine over here. So that Venom Mine goes off, you can set up for a headshot if you're feeling comfortable or you have a good idea of who's coming after you and you think you can kill them before they kill you. Or you abandon ship and jump back over here. I know in that other, in the other Widowmaker videos, uh, I talked about jumping and dodging between these two points. That's kind of the whole idea of this part of the map. Um, you want to stay alive, you want to sneak shots, you want to retreat if you have to. Uh, the problem with retreating, I mean, it's better to just have good healer, but th the problem with retreating is it takes a long time to get in and out of that room as Widow and then to jump back up, and you have to wait for your hook some of the time, so it's, it's a mixed bag. Alright, so now, one or two quick tricks. If they break this side, you change your Venom Mine position to over here. And the last thing that's notable is occasionally you'll have an offensive widow you're going up against. The offensive widow wants this area. Some of the time she doesn't want to she doesn't want to jump up there to take it, but other times and almost all the time they'll, they'll 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 take the risk and jump up. So you need to control this aerial space. If there is another widow on the team, you have to be cognizant of this. You have to be ready to shoot her. You have to win that fight because it's tremendously bad if you don't. A good trick for that is if she gets the edge on you and you need to jump down to avoid being shot, is to trick shot her from that ledge and take her out. Okay, so objective B. Uh, objective B I usually play up here. What I'll do is I'll throw a Venom Mine down this path and then I will cover this area. So over here is a small crack that you can shoot through to get some free damage and maybe even pick somebody off. You're only going to have about a split second, so you're just sort of reacting to any motion you see. Just boom, boom, boom through this hole. Uh, over here is a bit of a longer sight line. You, you can catch people as they're running in. Over here is if they're actually pushing all the way. Position yourself over here to fight against this side. Use this as cover. Position yourself against this wall with the Venom Mine covering your tail if you're fighting against this door. 
Now, I don't really do a lot of switching position here after this is set up because this is such a powerful spot to control. Um, a lot of the times if I'm pressured off there, I'll jump down and then immediately hook back up. Uh, this has the benefit of having them chase you down only to have you come back up, and then you can use this as, to guard as defense. Um, another neat trick is after you've wiped the team, you can concentrate on this area right here. And a lot of people who want to take the high road, you can just pop them in the head before they even get to you. You generally don't want to overextend to something like this. You're likely to get killed. You don't want to overextend to something like this unless the whole team is wiped and you want to get one or two shots off before they come back and then immediately retreat. So generally you're playing this area. All right, so that's it for the tutorial part, but let's talk about when you should be playing Widow. So if you're in competitive and you want to win and you want to be the one playing Widow on this map, you have to get your accuracy above 45%, I would say. I mean, generally, if you shoot a game for 40, you might still be doing fine. Uh, if you're shooting at 60, you're probably doing great. But you want to be in that range. You don't want to be much lower than that. Uh, you know, everybody has a bad game, but you want your Widow to be at around 50 on average. Now, 50% doesn't actually tell you how well you're doing as Widow. How many headshots you're landing as Widow is kind of, you know, when Widow really feels like she's overpowered. Especially with the, the recent nerfs to her body damage versus her head damage, where her head has remained the same. Uh, you really want to be landing those headshots. So that's sort of how you can always work to improve as Widow, even if your accuracy is already there. Highly recommend that you do not pick Widow on any map in a competitive game until you get your accuracy up there, because you're just going to be a liability for your team. But once it is up there, I highly recommend you play her on this map. If you cannot play Widow on this map, you probably can't play Widow. All right, guys, I hope you learned something. And if you did, please subscribe. Be, be honest with me. Did you notice? These are very broken.